We have released quite a few boring videos over the years, uh, jaw boring videos, and collaboratively they cover everything you need to know about this procedure. These videos will be referenced in the comments because today we'll introduce you to a line of lathe choke jaws and jaw boring rings that are available on HaasTooling.com. In addition to accompany this line of tools, we have created VPS templates that will create jaw boring programs quickly and easily by asking some simple questions. There is a line of jaws for each of the chucks available on our lathes, from our 5 inch sub spindles all the way up to our 15 inch chucks that are on the ST40s. As well as flat and pointy jaws in steel and aluminum, we also have a select range of round oppi jaws available. The jaw rings cover chucks up to 12 inch diameter and today we'll be using the 10 inch ring with some 10 inch short flat steel jaws on this ST25Y. The jaws are set in the correct position and tightened correctly. Let us clamp onto the jaw ring and by the way I have set the chuck pressure at 100 psi. Typically you don't want to run more than 110 psi chuck pressure. I'm going to set the clamp position at approximately the center of the jaw stroke travel. If this was an automated cell, it would generally be a good practice to set the stroke between the center and the bottom end of the stroke, which would provide more clearance for the robot or APL loading. This is where you benefit from clamping on the jaw ring, because it's easy to adjust to your preferred clamping position in seconds. The tool we are using is in position, and the tool offsets have already been set off the ATP arm. Also, the Z-work offset has already been set to the face of the jaws. I have also made a note of the X position here, which is slightly below the cut diameter. We will need this value later for the template jaw inner diameter position. We also need the insert cutting data for the template. So let's head to Haas Tooling and go get that info and also show why we came up with this insert for this presentation. I'm on the turning insert page of haastooling.com. As we go down the VPS template later, you will see why I chose this T-shaped insert. Next, I'll select the corner radius of 0.8 millimeters. We are cutting steel, so I'll select that as my primary workpiece material. Now, interrupted cutting is unavoidable when boring jaws on a lathe. Even on the smallest of cuts, that intermittent harsh impact can easily and quickly damage your insert. Therefore, for the remaining filter options, I am going to choose the grade HTP25 and chip breaker HMP. Those are the most suitable for interrupted cutting. After selecting my insert size, I'm left with this insert, 02-0688. I'm going straight to the speeds and feeds chat for this insert. This is the information I'll need for the template. The template can be found by pressing edit, selecting the VPS tab and arrow right to the VPS file. Cursor down to the ID turn file and press enter. Here you'll find the jaw boring template. Press enter and we can get that started. First we have our standard tool questions. I'll leave the tool number and offset as a current turret position. I'm also going to leave the work offset and maximum spindle RPM at their defaults of G54 and S2000. Now I need to refer to the speed and feed chart and you can see 650 surface feet per minute or 195 meters per minute is recommended for the HTP25 grid we have. So I'll enter that here. Here's something that is a little bit different to our other lay VPS templates. Typically, the Z rapid approach value can be set well within a millimeter or a few thousandths of the work offset before the turret rapids down to the start position. However, with a jaw boring, there may be some obstacles that prevent this simple Z then X rapid motion. So our default and range values account for obstacles like this jaw boring ring. I'm going to leave this at two inches as this clears the jaw ring. The template default is purposely set as F for a finishing profile because this cycle is usually the most common performed. This cycle will skin the jaw diameter and jaw face only. There is also an option to rough the jaws by entering R value. This is generally used on a new set of soft jaws or when modifying an older set. 
The third option is RF, which combines both cycles, rough and finish. This is the cycle we will select for this presentation. Next is the insert tip radius. Again, the template default was purposely set for a finishing profile with a standard 0.4 millimeter radius insert. But since we changed the cycle to the RF option, we will also change the insert radius to the larger 0.8 millimeter radius of 31 and a half thou, which will be able to handle the roughing and that's the radius of our 020688 insert. On a side note, if you are removing a substantial amount of material and you have a mill with a vise mounted nearby, it would be much easier and faster to mill away most of the material rather than rough turning. If you plan to run a flip operation, you can change from the default standard single step cycle to the two step jaw cycle. And you will see some other variables are required after this selection. Step jaws allow two different diameters to be clamped within the same jaw stroke without having to change jaws. This is ideal for running first and second operations within the same setup. Step jaws can be an easy way to make part flow more efficient and reduce tap time. Also, if you have a job that requires step jaws for a second operation, Haas Robot Cells offer a regrip station and VPS templates for flipping your part from OP1 to OP2. This allows you to run lights out and machine complete parts without an operator. The next row is probably the most awkward value to understand and to find, especially with a new set of flat appointed jaws. Basically, it's the diameter to start the rough can cycle. So here we have some flat jaws. It's kind of difficult to measure the diameter. This value usually needs some clearance also. This is the diameter I noted previously after I'd set my tool offsets. It's an approximate value and I'll enter that here. If the finished cycle was selected, this would be the diameter the toolpath ends at after cutting the jaw face. Now that we have set the rapid Z and the jaw inner diameter values, we have effectively navigated around the jaw ring safely and can enter the Z start value away from the date and face of the jaw. This is where we'll start the cutting cycle. I'll leave it at 100 thou. Then the finished diameter we need to machine is the diameter of the raw stock. So I'll enter that measured diameter here. And I'll enter the depth that I'm going to clamp on here. Finish diameter two will be the diameter I am clamping on for the second side of my step jaws. The value here will be smaller than the raw stock diameter and our ranges reflect that. After referring to my blueprint, that will be entered here. The cut length required for the step jaw diameter is taken from the datum. And again, the range is taken into account the previously entered cut length. I'm going to change this value here. We are done with the basics. We should be able to cut the jaws now, right? Not quite yet. We wanted to make this the most complete jaw boring template possible. So we have added a few more options for features that might seem small and insignificant, but ignoring these features can cause problems with quality or productivity. And why not spend a few seconds entering these values instead of spending valuable minutes manually machining or programming them later. First is the option for a chamfer or radius on the edge of your jaws. If this was an automated load, it would be more helpful to have a slight angle on the edge of your jaws to help load raw or irregular stock. A lead angle will guide offset of blanks into the jaws and prevent misload alarms. So I'll change this default R for radius to C for chamfer. This prompts a couple of chamfer values that are required. I'll leave the lead angle at the default 30 degrees. That's a good lead angle to load parts. The next is a chamfer length. I'm going to change this to a larger 100 thou or 2.54 millimeter length. The next row is again asking for the edge feature, but this time it's for the second step. We will leave this as a radius and we will enter 50 thou here, 1.27 millimeters. The next row asks for our corner depth relief. The default is based on the insert radius entered earlier and the range for this isn't very large. There's a reason we typically want a corner relief. Without it, any workpiece with sharp edges or raw material with sharp burrs will not locate correctly to the jaw face. 
A small relief is required to clear the sharp edge or burr. So I'll change this to 40 thou on my first corner for the raw blank. And I'll leave the corner relief for the step jaw diameter at 31 and a half thou. The next row is a display only page showing the user which standard lathe insert shape is required to form the corner reliefs. It also shows which inserts are unable to form the reliefs. That's why earlier on the hastooling.com page, I chose the T-shape insert. If the nose angle of your insert is greater than 60 degrees, then set the values of the previous two rows to zero. This will remove the reliefs from the profile. Next, I'll need to reference my speed and feed chart again and choose the depth of cut. Even with harsh machining, generally keeping the mid-range depth of cut is acceptable. And next, reducing the feed rate can help make sure the insert will make it through the cycle without failure. So I'll enter 60,000 depth of cut, which is about 1.5 millimeters. I'll set my feed rate slightly slower than recommended for roughing to 8,000 per rev. And I'll leave the finished feed rate at 5,000 per rev. Now the tool path for the corner reliefs is a straight plunge. And although it's only a small plunge, it's the most aggressive impact the insert has to endure. You may hear a loud vibration as the insert and tool take the impact of this pass. This is why the default feed and ranges are much lower than recommended on our data charts. We will leave this at 1000 per revolution. The next two variables are specifically for rough cycles. I'm going to leave 10,000 stock on the X and 3,000 stock for the Z for the finished pass to machine. Finally, I'll enter my coolant data then we can press F4 to generate the code and I'll output to MDI. And here we are running the program. Here are the completed jaws. We only had to deburr the edges of the jaws, and now we can load our raw blanks and second op blanks. There is also an OD jaw boring template for all your ID clamping needs. Well, thanks for watching our boring video. See you next time.